In part one, we talked about what subclasses were, and we started creating our own. Here's where we left off. We declared a new class called Moving Car, but to tell processing that this was a subclass of car, we followed the class definition by the words extends car. Now we just make a new class as usual. We have some new instance variables here, the height and color of the moving box. We have a new constructor, which we'll look at more closely in a moment. And then we have a bunch of new routines so we can respond to new messages. Notice that I've included a definition here for render, even though car already has a render. That's perfectly legal. And in fact, we do it all the time. It's no problem. When a moving car gets the message render, it just looks through its own definitions and it sees a procedure called render. So it calls it. The fact that car has a procedure called render as well is irrelevant. If an object has a procedure that matches the name of the message it was sent, it just executes that procedure. Only if it doesn't find a match, then it hands the message up the line. Now let's look more closely at the constructor. Here I've given it three arguments, the color for the car and the height and color of the moving box. The first thing we need to do is to create the little car that conceptually is inside every moving car. You might think we merely need to call the car's constructor and hand it the car's color like this. In fact, this is almost right, but we don't have anywhere to assign the result. Now we could make a new variable of type car, but then things would start to get messy. There's a cleaner solution where the computer handles all the work. Instead of directly calling the car's constructor and then assigning the result to something, we tell processing in effect, call the constructor for my superclass and automatically use the resulting instance when you need to. The way we do this is to use the new keyword super. This is the way we refer to our superclass or parent class. We use super rather than the name of the constructor, but we hand it the same arguments that the constructor would want if we were calling it directly. Here, the constructor for a car wants a color, so we hand that color to super. In effect, super calls the car constructor and it gets back the resulting instance and then automatically wires it into our new moving car. In essence, Moving car has now inherited all the variables and all the methods in car. To wrap up the constructor, we then assign the instance variables for the box's height and color in the usual way. Here, I'll just show the height. Now let's take a closer look at render. Of course, I don't want to copy and paste all the drawing code in car's version of render. What I'd really like to do is to call the version of render that's in car and let it draw the car. And then this routine will just draw the moving box on top of the roof. So how do I call the version of render that belongs to the super class? And the answer is to use super again. Remember that super refers to the object that we built by calling the super class's constructor. So to call the render procedure in the super class car, we just send the message render to the object super. And we do that in the usual way, super.render. If it took any arguments, we'd put them in here. Now this will invoke car's version of render, drawing a car on the screen. And once the car is up there, all I have to do now is choose the box's color for filling and draw the box. Again, the beauty of this is that if I later change how car draws itself, maybe I add a rear view mirror or I put bumpers on the front and the back, all of that automatically shows up in moving cars as well. Now you know how to call any routine in your class or super class. If the routine is in moving car, just call it like any other routine. If it's in car, proceed it with the word super and the period. Note, as usual, there are no spaces around the period. Let's see all of this in action. Here's our car class on the left and the moving car class on the right. I'll start by declaring a variable red car of type car 
so it's a garden variety car. I'll construct it by calling the car constructor and handing it a red color. This calls the constructor and it returns a red card to me. I can then call render and the car's render procedure runs and draws me a red car. Now let's look into the subclass stuff. I'll declare a blue moving car. To get started, I'll call the moving car constructor, handing it a blue color. The first thing the constructor does is call super with the arguments for the car's constructor. Conceptually, this creates a little car inside of our moving car and wires things together. This is very important, and in any subclass constructor, almost always, the first thing you do is call the superclass constructor. That wires everything together. With that done, we then save the local instance variables, and we're finished, returning our new blue car. Now, I'll send blue car the message render. Since moving car has a render message, that gets executed. And the first thing it does is tell the little car inside of itself to draw itself by saying superclass run your render method. So that render gets invoked and it draws the blue car. That returns and now moving car continues from that spot, choosing a new color for filling and drawing the moving box on the roof. To recap, here are the basics of writing a subclass. It's just like any other class, but with three new things. First, the class declaration includes the word extends, followed by the name of the superclass that this class is enhancing. Then in the constructor, the first thing we do is call the superclasses constructor. Only we use the word super rather than the name of the superclass. Finally, we can send messages to our superclass. The name of the object representing the superclass object is super. So super.render sends the render message to the superclass instance for this moving car. As I said before, subclassing can get kind of complicated and it can seem pretty subtle when you're first exposed to the idea. I've only given you the basic fundamentals here, but they're enough for you to get a huge boost from the idea of subclassing. The beauty of this whole scheme is that when you change a parent class, either by giving it new capabilities or improving what it already does, like how it moves or how it draws itself, those changes are automatically inherited by all the subclasses. Now that you know the basics, you can use all that power in your own projects.